Olympics, with an estimated audience of comfortably over half a billion people. But arguably, the most important ones are the ones will be playing it, not watching it. And this is the scene inside the tunnel at the Estadio Bernabeu. And we saw a, a few little shots of some of the players embracing, high fives, a few hugs. Was it always that friendly, Thierry? <laughs> and after, during the game, and, and after the game, obviously, not so much, but uh, that's something that I always say. I never personally understood why it, it is what it is, but you play with each other in the national team, why are you not going to say hi? And then if I have to do something on the field, if I have to kill you in bracket when I say you do it because you play for Barcelona or you play for Real Madrid, but, you know, that, that, that's a normal thing in Spain. People would kiss hi, how are you? But then when the ref blows the whistle, it's a good story. Just, just briefly, Guillaume, in terms of the political context of today's game, it's not a political programme we're doing here, but given the Catalan regional elections, what would be the symbolic significance, if any, of a Barcelona well, election? The elections were two days ago. Obviously, people are still trying to model exactly what happened and what it means, but remember that fans don't travel away. It must be about maybe 300, 400 Barcelona fans, so they won't be heard. But certainly Real Madrid and the Real Madrid fans have shown that they want to, every time they're meeting a Catalan team, they want to make very clear the position. So the stands will just make a stand for the Spanish nationalism. And I think, even though there's not a very political camp, this quarter of Barcelona, there's one or two there that will really appreciate that victory, not just for the three points. How important do you think the atmosphere is going to be today? How much of a role, how much of a 12th man for Real Madrid can the Bernabeu be? I think, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is going to be what it's going to be, but I don't think in, at that moment, the players that you have on that field and the magnitude of the game, you almost don't hear, don't hear the stadium anymore. It's what's happening on the field, 11 v 11, plus the, the bench, which we, we believe that the one of Real Madrid is stronger than the one of, uh, of Barcelona, but you don't really think about it when, you, when you're there. OK, so this is the Real Madrid starting lineup, and this is the one change from the side that started the Club World Cup final win over Gremio in Abu Dhabi, which is a significant one. And uh, there he is in the centre, Mateo Kovacic comes in for Isco, who is on the bench, along with uh, Gareth Bale. Uh, just very, very briefly, what about the contribution from the bench? Yeah. Well, the names, Isco, Lucas Vázquez, Asensio, Bale, those are the forwards. And in a minute, we'll compare them to the forwards, oh, well, Barcelona, but can you see any? Uh, no, Suarez. well, this is it, there's, there's no doubt yes. about it. We'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just quickly <laughs> mention uh, Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez. He's never officiated a oh, Real Madrid wow. defeat, taking charge of nine games with him involved, uh, won seven and drawn two. He also did the Supercopa second leg, which Madrid won 2-0, and he sent Mateo Kovacic off against Valencia. This is Barcelona then. So the one change for them uh, from the side that started the 4-0 win at Hunti Deportivo last weekend uh, is the uh, introduction of uh, Sergio Busquets for Paco Alcácer, who is out injured. And then, obviously, you're going to have Messi and Suarez up front. Guillaume, can you hear the app? That's not normal. They put the volume down and <laughs> allow people to chat. They're, they're normally much quieter than this. They're very up for it, of course, the fans. By the way, 173 Clasico appearances each for Real Madrid and Barcelona. And uh, transfer fees for the two sides combined, the starting 11s, totaling almost £400 million. Pounds. Wow. Of course, we've got to have a little bit of pre-match atmosphere, and that is the sixth Club World Cup that Real Madrid have won. And Sergio Ramos doing the honours. They, they tend to do this. Ronaldo celebrated his Ballon d'Or in front of the Bernabeu, and so Ramos doing the same with the Yeah, and uh, there is no guard from Barcelona uh, to <laughs> celebrate that, so it was uh, just a reminder who is the world champion. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about Pasillos with Thierry. He's already had to yeah. go through that pain before <laughs> in, in, a, in a Barcelona shirt. So this is it. We are all set for the first La Liga Clásico of this 2017-18 season. So let's hand you to your commentary team. It's a happy birthday to Terry Gibson and a happy Clásico day to Rob Palmer. And Philip Navidad to everybody else as well. Make no plans for the next couple of hours. Forget your Christmas shopping. Put the phone on silent. Take a seat. Take a pew. Get yourself ready for the greatest game on the globe. Well, they have the pro independence folks this week in Catalonia, win today, and Barcelona will put some distance between themselves and the men from the capital.
The aim for them is for the first time ever to win three successive La Liga games at the Estadio Bernabeu. Barcelona, top of the table. But remember, Real Madrid are the champions of Spain, the champions of Europe, just crowned the champions of the world as well. And they are really up for this one, full strength. One slight surprise from Zinedine Zidane. Kovacic starts his first La Liga game of the season. Maybe in the mind of Zidane is the success in the Spanish Super Cup when Kovacic started both of the games. Terry Gibson, what's in your crystal ball? Well, just looking at the position that, that Kovacic has started and he's put up there alongside Busquets in an advanced role. There is Cristiano Ronaldo to Tony Cruz. Carvajal overlapping, throwing the ball into the sunshine. This beautiful day in the Spanish capital. A lot of the supporters are wearing sunglasses. A little local difficulty. The referee, Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez. Making his views known with Gerard Piquet. We normally get an early goal in the Clásico. More often than not, it has been Real Madrid who score early as well. Crows fires it in, free header, we've got that early goal! But it's not going to count. Ronaldo was lurking offside. Well, I refrain from speaking too long about the position of Kovacic because I know full well we do get early goals in this fixture. I expected it to be Real Madrid that start off in a, a real ferocity in their attacking play. Players are committed into getting to the attacking half. They're going to try and press and win the ball back quickly from Barcelona. We're looking to, to try and ease their way into the game. It's a clear offside, good decision. Casemiro over the initial header. And the correct decision from the referee, Ronaldo offside. As he slams it past Ter Stegen from close range, off the underside of the crossbar. But the goal doesn't count. No technology needed. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi have both got 53 goals each in the year 2017. If just joining us, of course, no Gareth Bale in the starting lineup. The famous BBC haven't been together on the pitch for a single minute in La Liga since the Clasico last year in April. Bale, you know, has gone 90 minutes only four times in 63 games. He's on the bench, Asensio's on the bench, Isco on the bench. The creative department are watching from the sidelines. It's a functional team picked by Zinedine Zidane. Cross to Marcelo, very much on the front foot. It's Real Madrid who are setting the pace of the game. Ronaldo, the trademark step over. PK gets his big boot in the way. We saw Marcelo push forward in the importance on both teams' fullbacks today. In terms of attacking play, defensive play, we've got essentially eight central midfield players. So the onus is going to be on the, the fullbacks to push forward, and then at the same time get back and defend against their direct opponent. There is Danny Carver. Halley has a shooting opportunity. Just merely takes the lunchtime dew off the grass. Busquets. Iniesta has been preserved to be fully fit for this game. However, the, the long range attempt doesn't have the power to fix a Stegen. And you see the Barcelona players actually do. Part the six yard box, who is in there alone. Correct call from the officials. And to show that Ronaldo has got his scoring instincts about him. He's only scored four goals in La Liga so far this season, but he has been excelling, especially in European competition. Nine in the Champions League, in the hero in the club World Championship. Ronaldo tiptoes along that touchline. Benzema, the only player in the area. 
Barcelona have hardly escaped their own half in the opening five minutes of this game. First mention of Lionel Messi. Here is Kovacic, the surprise inclusion in ahead of Bale and Isco and Asensio. Modric. It's his pantomime season and here's Peter Pan, the little Croatian midfield player. 32 years of age, a bundle of energy. Piquet shielding his eyes from the sun. His fingers might have to go in his ears, he's uh, not popular in these parts. You see it's Marcelo there closing down Sergio Roberto, so Marcelo really advanced. You can see clearly how Real Madrid, what they want to do, try and win the ball back quickly, force Barcelona into playing long balls to the strikers and hope that would expect Nelson Varane to win the those aerial challenges. Well, a couple of years ago we had the five costliest players ever performing in this game. None of the top five costliest players are on the pitch at the moment. Only Cristiano Ronaldo. But Barcelona would love to get Dembele out there. The summer signing is only performed a couple of times. A sudden burst of energy from Barcelona, and it was led by Lionel Messi. He was the first player to move around the pitch to try and put pressure on the Real Madrid players. And then we see the appeal from Barcelona with the foul against Casemiro and Paulina, which wasn't given. Verdi doesn't have a great record <laughs> against Zinedine Zidane. He's faced him five times as a manager and lost all five. Suarez is uh, offside. And he wasn't manager of Barcelona when he was taking Zidane up in these other fixtures. Well, they have faced each other, of course, three times this season in that high-profile friendly game in the United States in Miami in July and then in the Spanish Super Cup. That is why Suarez was arguing. He felt that he wasn't offside. The man with the flag thought otherwise. It was a close call, wasn't it, Sergio Ramos? was the deepest Madrid defender. It, was, it appeared to be pretty level with Luis Suarez, very little in that call. Will be a common theme though and throughout the game. We will see Luis Suarez caught offside on a number of occasions in his attempt to, to steal a yard to get him behind Varane and Ramos. So much nervous tension out there. A game fueled by stress. Rakitic, Busquets, Thomas Vermalen, the forgotten man of Barcelona. His hats return with the defensive crisis. Mascherano, it appears, is heading to China. And Titi is out until the new year. So for Marlon, who hadn't started a game since January 2016, suddenly return for four games in a row. And your former skipper of Arsenal is short, short of experience. And with uh, Thierry Henry's Belgian boys. He has been playing regularly for the international team, over 60 caps, with no doubt about his quality as a central defender, it's just it's so unfortunate, it's about his reliability in terms of being fit, being able to maintain fitness. He started more games for Belgium this year than he has Barcelona. Varane. Modric. Carabajal in the outside lane. Kovacic to... Casemiro. Brings a different dimension to the midfield, Kovacic, and from the way they're lining up, the suggestions that he was out there to man Mark Messi seems to be a little wide of the mark. Yeah, he's almost in the same position as Isco, but I think it's just it's essentially it's Casemiro sitting deeper than the other three, isn't it? Ronaldo awaits, comes to Ronaldo, missed kick from Ronaldo, Carvajal can't get there, emergency action taken by Iniesta, who's done himself some damage. The rare wild air kick for the World Player of the Year. He'll claim it was a dummy. 
good, good attacking play again from Real Madrid. Really bright down the left side of the attack. Always cut back to Ronaldo. We're all expecting at the very least for him to test this. Stegen. Complete miss kick. And Carvajal, see here. It was really good work from Iniesta to make sure that Carvajal was rushed into taking that opportunity. He's feeling a little embarrassed. It's not like there's half a billion people watching him. Well, this is problematic for Barcelona. Their leader, Andres Iniesta, looks uh, decidedly uncomfortable down there. The signs are, are not, I'm no doctor, but the club doctor is taking his time treating him. The signs are not good here, Terry. Well, they'll, be, they'll be hoping he just took a blow and it's just an impact injury. So he slides, he makes the challenge and does he hit the twist or does he catch the... Well, have caught the lap, yeah, just below the shin guard the of Danny Carvajal, yeah, just above the boot where there's no protection. So no intent from Danny Carvajal was there rather than to get to the ball first. And Danny Carvajal shoot towards goal. So Barcelona down a player as Crows throws the corner in. PK takes control. Niesta's okay. He's going to jog round and. Rejoin the party. Crows launches it. Barcelona have all bases covered. Retrieved by Varane. Jordi Alba's header. Modric assesses the situation. The all action, Danny Carvajal. Ronaldo nods it down, but the referee spotted that. Good save, Ronaldo stayed up in the attack after the set piece, was not in a rush to get back, so added to the numbers. That's important for Real Madrid that they don't just rely on Ronaldo and Benzema. It's really attacking players. We see Ronaldo with just a little push. We saw from a different angle. A little nudge on Sergio Roberto to ease him out of the way. This is back on. It was just an impact injury, so relief for Valverde, I'm pretty sure. Busquets. Marcelo. Arms go up. Flag stays down until Ronaldo touches the ball. The assistant on this near side teasing everybody. There's been two or three of those instances where the Barcelona players have been waiting and expecting the assistant referee's flag to go up. On this occasion it does. Great record offside. of the season. The fans are expecting Coutinho, and they got Paulinho. He's the leading midfield scorer in the whole of Spain. Rakitic. This gets a strangely lazy ball. I'm not sure why he's looking at the pitch and trying to claim this a divot. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case from over here. Pressure from PK. And a jersey from PK. Brilliant run from Modric. He's spotted by Ter Stegen. I'm sure that's ideal though for Real Madrid. It's a fantastic run from Modric, but they want him scheming in midfield, don't they? Keeping the, the play ticking over for Real Madrid as opposed to making runs down the channel. Slipstream and Cristiano Ronaldo. Now Kerry bends him up. Jordi Alba gets in the way. Messi. The Rams played a very high line. If anything, he seems to be the man who's babysitting Lionel Messi. Just a 
communication, isn't it, between the likes of Ran and Ramos and Casemiro. Here is Messi, starting from deep. Iniesta. Jordi Alba. That's a oh, well-intentioned ball from Iniesta. This was the disputed offside. We're talking centimetres, aren't we? That's the type of striker Luis Suarez is. Tries to make sure that he can make that dancing run in behind. He trusts the midfield players, and so he should. So we're not be given the service that he needs. It's just a matter of time in those runs. He was unlucky on that occasion. He's been called offside, but I think acceptable error there from the assistant referee. Benzema to Modric to hold it up as Ronaldo's offside. Barcelona playing a, a very high line. They're famed for their spectacular goals, Barcelona, but under Valverde, they've got a, a tremendously well organised defence this season. They've had 16 clean sheets, including three in a row in the last three matches. Casemiro have swapped roles here, haven't they? It's Casemiro that's gone forward. Referee sees nothing wrong in the challenge. This is Rakitic, nice turn away from Marcelo. Had to go solo, Messi's with him now. Suarez to the right. Paulinho across the face, calling away by Varane. Picked up by Tony Kroos. Casemiro. Cross. Now Benzema. For Marlon diving in there on the Frenchman. A little bit of a cautious start, but things are beginning to open up a little bit here. Yeah, I think that would be pleased with his team's start because they haven't conceded a goal. He would have known full well that with the point situation, the deficit of Real Madrid have at the moment, Real Madrid would have come out of the traps quickly. Be pleased these him, just settling into the game now. A little exposed of possession. Modric. Legged up by the Marlin. The card follows. Just gets given the ball away. The square pass in midfield, left Barcelona. Vulnerable to the counter-attack and cynical foul on the old, in the end from Vermaelen and Modric. I'm surprised to see the yellow card shown. Thomas Pavard, Vermaelen has to watch his step for the remainder of the game. Last time he was sent off, it was on his debut last year for Roma, went on loan. The din of the Bernabeu. Ease of the Busquets. Paulinho not allowed to carry the ball out. He's been a little low key so far, Sergio Ramos. He's actually quite lucky to get away with that one in terms of the yellow card as well, isn't he? Because again, it was a cynical foul, a tactical foul to make sure the Barcelona didn't get up the field. Well, he's normally somewhere in the headlines, good or bad. Ramos, when it comes to a Clasico, being dismissed in three of the last seven against Barcelona that he's played. He's just got a last-minute equaliser 12 months ago. in the tangle. Iniesta helps it off. So far, Real Madrid 
tactically have got it right. They haven't allowed any of Valverde's creative minds to express themselves. Yep, we've seen very little of Iniesta and Paulinho and Paulinho, Messi and Suarez. Modric has been the most prominent Real Madrid player so far. Seeking Ronaldo. Ronaldo steadies himself. He has options. His favourite option was to go solo. Paulinho. Casemiro <laughs> catches his fellow countryman. Midfield player. Suarez is not going to win a race with Varane, one of the quickest defenders in world football. And he's found his form again recently, Luis Suarez, with five games without a goal. And now he scored six in his last five La Liga matches. Jordi Alba, Iniesta, Paulinho, as he takes it on, Carvajal digs in. Now Kovacic. Sergio Ramos. Lorich. Marcelo. on the outside, the brilliant ball, PK commits, goal kick. Mudric really beginning to take control of the game, isn't he? Dictating the way that Real Madrid play when they pass the ball forward, when they keep possession. See evidence again of the offside goal that Ronaldo had disallowed early in the game. Suarez can't be offside, effectively a back pass. Plays it to Messi. A ball juggling from Lionel Messi. Paulinho. Messi continues. Casemiro has to be careful. Yeah, that's that's the role Casemiro has to play. We spoke earlier about swapping with Kovacic. I think that's a risk. I think if he takes responsibility for staying in that position where Messi likes to operate, there's no misunderstanding. If he goes forward and he hopes that Kovacic takes his place, that just might not happen. One or two occasions, and Messi will profit. Messi is the corner taker. Cristiano Ronaldo is the defender who wins the header. Rakitic breezes past Cruz. Even Benzema's back defending. All hands to the pump for Real Madrid. Iniesta. Messi dropping deep, largely been playing alongside Suarez, but he's now taking on that blue bottle role where he just buzzes around and you can't pin him down. Yep, he's becoming frustrated because that, that midfield area is dominated by central midfield players. There's very little room for Messi to operate in. That might be the feature of the game for quite a while before it does stretch out and open up. So congested in and around that centre circle. Messi. Carvajal casually back to Kayla Navas. The Marlins header. Yes, they're really urging his teammates to calm down, settle down, keep possession, perhaps be a little bit more patient. So far, it's a controlled performance from both teams. It's a study of first class football. Cristiano Ronaldo. There's some doubts about his fitness. He trained alone two days this week and he rejoined the team fully yesterday. Modric. Brilliant blind side run by Kovacic. The Marlins header. 
so much space, wasn't there, for Kovacic makes that run from deep, timed it really well. Took that space in the wide positions, Carvajal and doing enough together to find Luis Suarez. The lunchtime sun beating down into the eyes of Ter Stegen, causing him and the Barca defenders a problem. PK not blinded though, and the referee again spots an infringement. against Real Madrid. Well, they take a break in Spain after today, but we have plenty of football here on Sky Sports. On Boxing Day, don't forget it's Spurs against Southampton, midday kickoff on Sky Sports Premier League channel. And later that day, at Anfield, at Liverpool against Swansea. Effectively get two weekends off in Spain, they come back to the Copa del Rey. Ronaldo, too far ahead of Kelly Benzema. The times are a change for both of these clubs. They disbanded the MSN and the BBC. Now Benzema, Cristiano haven't played together, even been on the field together since the 39th minute of last year's El Clasico in April. So Messi and Suarez is MS. It won't be a surprise, will it, to see Bow at some stage? It's what he's been doing in recent matches to good effect. Something Zidane would have considered in his team selection before the game. Not a game of fitness, but level if it's tight it's a fantastic substitute to have Abahau Moran Kovacic Marcelo's out left Marcelo dinks it in easy for PK to deal with Marcelo fitters again Still easy for PK to deal with. Cross. <laughs> Iniesta and Modric collide. Two of the lightweights <laughs> in the division. Huge respect for each other, no surprise. Modric really throwing himself into this challenge, likewise Iniesta. See the difference on the slow run, the early Sunday players back behind the boards. Two moments you think the Real Madrid are threatening on the counter attack before you know it, six or seven Barcelona players are back behind the ball. Working really hard to make sure they're hard to score against, which has been the case for the majority of this season. Continuing to do so again today. The first mistimed challenge by Sergio Ramos catching Paulinho. Sergio Roberto. Barcelona haven't been allowed to burst into life so far. Here is Messi with his minder, Kovacic. It's interesting now, Terry. Kovacic does seem to be following Messi around. He's gone to the left back position because Messi is on the right wing. There's the space elsewhere to be exploited. Messi, Paulinho, great run from Paulinho, all a little rushed, took a touch. Great save. Change in pace in Barcelona's attack there. Impatient, haven't they? Paulinho, no surprise to see him in attacking position, so great running behind, of course he trusts that Messi's going to spot the run and have the skill to put it on the plate for him. Great attempt to goal, fantastic goalkeeper from Pedro Namas. Tip it over the ball. Rakitic with this corner. PK has one step. Carver Howe gets dug in. PK goes down. Is please 
Ball that empty is Marcelo finds the escape route. Tony Cross. Kovacic has freed himself from looking after Messi. Half an hour gone. We await the first goal. And again, Rob, it's, it's great defensive play from Barcelona. It looked like it was going to be a counter-attack from Real Madrid, but players got back quickly. They slowed down Marcelo. Piquet was attempt appealing for a penalty. In 10 seconds, 15 seconds, he's back behind the ball as well. Barcelona working really hard to deny Real Madrid at the moment. Marcelo. Ronaldo. Shifting through the gears. The step over from Ronaldo! Again, needed a body in the way. It suited him at times today, isn't it, to play in his old position, to pull out wide on the left where there's plenty of space, and he'll be up against Sergio Roberto. He goes outside Sergio Roberto, we see the familiar step over, and again, likewise with Kaylor Navas, fantastic goalkeeping for Testegan to deny Ronaldo. The game's opening up. Gross corner. Ronaldo crashes through the crowd. Well, an important save from both keepers. This was PK's penalty claim. Just throwing himself on the floor there, isn't he? Isn't he? You see, look, from that angle, you see Carvajal does get him across the shins. Certainly a risky challenge from Danny Carvajal. Penalty nobody heard the first attempt. Well, it was a necessary touch from Kayla Nevis. He's the goalkeeper they keep writing off. They've not been for that um, faulty fax machine. They claim David De Gea would have been here. There's always speculation in the Spanish press. And there are strong possibilities that Kepa, the keeper from Athletic Bilbao, may be joining Real Madrid. Navas rarely puts in a bad showing. Costa Rican representative in this global game. The head piercing whistles from the Real Madrid supporters. They haven't spotted a Barcelona fan yet. A few half and half scarves from the uh, the tourists in town. It can't be half and half. It's impossible to be neutral when viewing this game. Unless you're the commentary team, of course. Varane. Which is it at Benzema. Only two La Liga goals this season for Karim Benzema. He's actually failed to score in ten of his last twelve matches. He always gets the backing of his manager, fellow countryman Zinedine Zidane, appreciating the running that he puts in for the team. Doing the running for Barcelona is PK. Get back, shouts the bench. He's not that time yet. Which gets his sold short by Lionel Messi. Ronaldo wins it off Messi. Modric. Ronaldo's run. He's onside, he's got Benzema in support, he feeds Benzema! It took two to stop him. Again, it's really good work defensively from Barcelona because when Real Madrid are in, in the mood and they're in top form and they get those chances on the counter-attack, they really make the most of them. Modric with a great pass in behind, but now they're just about beats the offside traps, gets behind Jordi Alba and Thomas Van on the left side of Barcelona's defence. Places it across the six-yard box, couple of deflections. Pique does well to track them when a Benzema. I think it's actually the right call. Top-class defending from, from Marlon and PK. Here's another view of that superb save. It's literally fingertips, isn't it? Reflexes were fantastic from Kaylor Navas. Good attempt on goal from Paulinho. Was voted third in the world goalkeeper year behind Buffon and Neuer. Marcelo. Real 
Madrid trying to find the rhythm of their supporters. Suarez, not a lot of support. Almost willing them to foul him, but he loses his own footing. Now Karma. PK. Busquets. Ronaldo looking lively, no signs of that reported hamstring injury. Marcelo frees himself from defensive duty. Tony Cross. Kovacic. Marcelo. Roberto loses Marcelo. He sticks to his task, is helped out by PK. Busquets. Iniesta finds freedom, but poor pass by Andres Iniesta. One or two signs, haven't they, from Barcelona? That they've got the potential, of course, they have to spring some attacking play, use their quality in the attacking half of the pitch, but by and large, they've been content to make sure they're disciplined in midfield. Busquets has stayed just in front of two century defenders. I haven't seen too much of Jordi Alba pushing forward, certainly not Sergio Roberto, so he from Barcelona has been on a disciplined performance. Marcelo. Come to play by Roberto. It's a poor cross from Sergio Roberto. He's taken a heavy blow, Marcelo. He's looking uncomfortable down there. I think uh, he's going to require a little bit of attention. Whiplash. It's a shot from Sergio Roberto, isn't it? It's intentional. from Julie Alberts, followed by this points pass from Iniesta to Luis Suarez. Four backs, change there together, PK getting out. So Marcelo just slipping over the ball when he was trying to cut it back towards the edge of the box. We would like to see more, of course, of, of Messi in the game. Zinedine Zidane certainly wouldn't. Could have made it his team have kept Messi quiet so far. Pamala. Now PK. This gets has been sort of colour in the first half in his usual self. In terms of his passing distribution. from Sergio Roberto. Iniesta brings the flying Jordi Alba into play. The man who's created more goals for Barcelona than any other this season. Normally for that man, Messi. Iniesta rides the challenge for Modric. Alba, Messi. Gets the cross in. Oh, brave header by Paulinho, and it required another save from Navas. And Paulinho at the moment is the danger man. Both teams have got their different ways of attacking, isn't it? Counter-attack play from Real Madrid. When Barcelona step up the pace and the tempo in that final third, they're really tough to deal with. Three or four players getting involved. Paulinho again getting into the, the centre-forward position. It's a really good attempt at goal. Come from save from Kerlin Amis, one you'd expect him to make, but good attacking play, sharp play from Barcelona. Not much of a run-up for Rakitic. Little Messi. Kovacic. So close to him, he's almost wearing his shirt. Suarez. Neat feet from Suarez. Leaves Marcelo on the ground. And Casemiro is the insurance man in there. Marcelo. Now Benzema. A stretch of the legs for Cristiano Ronaldo. Four defenders greet him. Cuts it back. Benzema. Oh, he so wanted to get it to Carvajal. Carvajal gets it now. <laughs> PK got that almost by default. Marcelo. Real Madrid 
applying the pressure, getting stronger. Cross. Carvajal puts it in. Busquets becoming the extra defender and goal kick. Some respite for Parson. Again, another good counter attack from Real Madrid. Barcelona have really defended the cross as well, haven't they? Predominantly when the ball has been delivered into the box. It's Romano or Pico who's there first. The full backs haven't made any rash challenges, and there's been plenty of opportunities to do that one. Marcelo and Carvajal are pushing forward for Real Madrid. And they just lost the momentum of that attack, didn't they? You can see Ronaldo with the. Say half chance earlier on, it was a real good chance. We see this the clutch with Carver Hull. That's been exported, it's playing the ball out from the back to the two centre halves who split, but Real Madrid have found a way of stopping it. So Stegen has to hit it long. Paulinho is the interesting position, isn't it? We talked about Kovacic and Casemiro where they were going to play Paulinho's centre forward alongside Suarez at times. Marcelo stops by Sergio Roberto. Well, he has been the surprise hit coming in from Chinese football, Paulinho. Never really made an impression at Tottenham. Marcelo's cross, Benzema steals in. First time he's found any space, agonisingly close. Yeah, brilliant centre forward play, good attacking play from Real Madrid, cross into the box exactly at the right time and standing movement from Karim Benzema. You can see initially he makes that run drift towards the far post and when the cross is delivered, sharp run across for Marlon. So unlucky to see his head up, flash across goal, just off the outside of the post. switch wings he's got space with Carvajal they line up anticipating the cross Carvajal can only find Iniesta just about get away with it last night no idea why Julie Elba was on the halfway line looking for a flick on from Paulinho his back position was vacated and some space again for Carvajal made the most of those opportunities there's been numerous opportunities in the first half for Real Madrid Pick out a pass to be a bit more precise with the final ball into the 18 yard box. Roberto, the round comes high. Ronaldo wasn't expecting it. He's standing offside. See Benzema does really well. Typical centre forwards play, getting across the defender. As Marcelo whips in a Really good cross. It's not unfortunate there. Madrid carrying Benzema, so unlucky. Rakitic. PK to Busquets. No goals. We approach the final scheduled minute of the first half. You feel it's going pretty much according to the plan of both coaches so far, Terry? Yeah, but it's going to be interesting if there's a goal in the first half, how it's going to pan out as the game goes on, because we know Real Madrid, they won't be happy with a draw, with a points deficit. A win can turn the tide and get them back in the title race, and I'll be down to eight, they have their game in hand. Could be down to five eventually. So I think that the nature of the game, the personality of the game will change, the mentality of the teams will change. In the last 30 minutes or so, if it's all level. There is Andres Iniesta. Rarely goes 90 minutes, only done so once this season. But they preserved him for this game. Messi. Roberto. Messi, who is caught in full flight by Marcelo. Really a mistimed challenge. Set piece, which is an important aspect of that foul from Marcelo. 
Just a single John. minute added to the first half. This could be the, the final opportunity. It's a, a grand distance out, but it is little Messi standing over the ball. Paulinho and Suarez waiting for any spillages. Well, 30 seconds to go before the half-time break, so no doubt he's going to take on the shot. Why not? Difficult. A small wall is built for protection. Messi draws breath. Messi delivers, but uh, it's Casemiro and Ronaldo who clash heads, keeping it out of there. Half time whistle goes. Nothing between these two teams. Cristiano Ronaldo bravely blocking the shot of Lionel Messi. Half time. It's 0 0. These two teams. Barcelona only lost two games this season. They were against Real Madrid. They haven't lost in the last 24 games since the Spanish Super Cup. Real Madrid, a grand distance behind Barca in the standings, but they do have a game in hand to be played in February. Sergio Roberto to the sunny side of the field, to Paulinho, had that outstanding chance in the first half. Benzema, Carvajal. And for just joining us, Real Madrid were pretty much as we expected. The one surprise was in midfield where Kovacic started. Gareth Bale, Asensio and Isco are on the bench. Barcelona side pretty much to Lex itself, though. The weakest position is for Marlon having to play alongside Gerard Piquet. Cristiano Ronaldo whips it in. Is it the trademark tantrum? Well, we've seen him numerous times, hundreds of times <laughs> over the years, cut inside and moves his right foot from the left flank. On many occasions this season, there have been better options to keep the attack going, to, to play a little give and go around the edge of the box. He's climbing the corner there. And he felt it had grazed the back of Sergio Roberto's socks. Casemiro. Marginal decision. Two midfield players tussling for possession. Rakitic does no more than just run alongside Casemiro. You see the attempt from the angle from Ronaldo. Put it in the field for the corner. Needs must goalkeeping there from Kayla Navas. It's an untidy clearance as well, puts his team under pressure. Busquets. Suarez. Iniesta. Suarez. Fakes to go inside. Navas has been lively. Less to face than his opposite number, but one top class save to keep out. Palinho in the midst of the first half. Barcelona do have their problems at the moment. Dembele's not back fully fit yet. Rafinha is rejoining the team. And he was saying, Terry, during the half-time break, there's very little for Barcelona to dip into. This is Paulinho. Supported by... Sergio Roberto. The hot ticket, 80,264. There's a few hundred didn't turn up. Watched by half a billion around the world. 180 different countries all tuning in. Busquets. Iniesta. Alba. The pendulum of possession has swung 
away at Barcelona in the second half. Roberto. Rakitic. Madrid happy to sit back. Rakitic takes it to them. Now Suarez steadies the pace. And Modric clears. No doubt whatsoever that type of style of play suits Barcelona better, doesn't it? It's a form of defending away from home against Real Madrid. Real Madrid at times lose discipline and become impatient. And the team does have possession against them. See there initially from Rakitic and knocked the ball wide. Real Madrid were able to close it out, but this type of play sort of does suit Barcelona more. It's up to Real Madrid to get out and to try and confront them, to try and win the ball back as quick as they did in the first half. It was a little different to the pace of the game which was played here last April. That uh, fiery 3 2 game. Ronaldo blocked by PK. Busquets, Palinho. And you can see this clearly, as it's so soon after the half-time break, is the instruction from the from the coach to take the, the heat out of the game. It certainly controls the tempo of the game, doesn't it, from Barcelona's perspective. Busquets to Palinho. Benzema comes back and chases. Struggling to get possession. Lazy layoff from Suarez. Carvajal. The possession game for Barcelona looks fluid amongst the usual suspects. When it goes into Paulinho, he's tempted now and then to do a back heel and flick round the corner and does give away possession. Not to Busquets, Sergio Roberto, and he's in yes to have played this way their whole life. Quite happy to, to go sideways, to go backwards. Know the importance of keeping the ball. All of all side shows there that the referee ignores. Casemiro digs in, bends him up. The referee doing his bit to try to keep things flowing as it's become decidedly scrappy. That's what Real Madrid have to do: go and confront that can't allow Barcelona easy possession. Have to get amongst them. Yes, the Tesla, Casemiro, and Busquets. Talked about a congested area of the pitch. All those central midfield players playing in the game. Half house from Tony Kroos, but that has to have to deal with. It does well because uh, you see Messi creeping into the picture there, looking for a loose touch from the goalkeeper. He's very much the modern goalkeeper, Kayla Nevers. If you see his workout routine, it's like heading to Cirque du Soleil. And there's acrobatics. PK. Palinho stepping through a minefield of tackles. Oh, Gross trying to free Cristiano Ronaldo. Now again, Messi. Again, you see the Barcelona usual players just keeping it nice and easy. Two touch football, keeping the ball moving. Paulinho again, keeping the ball away. Messi broke the hearts of the Real Madrid supporters with that last minute goal last season. It's a lovely ball. Alba pulls steam ahead, cuts it back. Suarez. To the rescue again is Navas. Clearly a different style of play from Barcelona in the second half. And is this a tentative finish from Luis Suarez? Certainly not tentative. Attacking play from Jordi Alba. Breaks down the left. Cut back. It wasn't messy on that occasion. It was Suarez with a side foot finish. And the save from Kelo Navas. Marcelo. Casemiro lays off to Benzema. Bahad. Modric. Tony Kroos. Easy for Sergio Roberto to defend. Iniesta. Busquets. I thought he was going to panic then. <laughs> Not Busquets, it's Rakitic. Drives on. Roberto to his right. Suarez to his left, comes across to Suarez! First blood, Barcelona! Patience pays off. Well, it's a classic Barcelona goal. Starts from the back, but Busquets under severe pressure. True to their start of play, 
he doesn't panic. I joked about it, but you can see the importance of how Barcelona play, what they want to do. Come out with the second half and a completely different frame of mind. Possession is the be all and end all. And you can see the lack of discipline from Real Madrid. Casemiro is caught upfield. Huge space in the centre midfield. I still tell you about the importance of Kovacic taking out that responsibility. And Casemiro pushes forward. Rakitic was able to move freely into the attacking area of the pitch, into the danger area, and it really opens up. You see, Kovacic allows Rakitic to run right through the middle. The ball out wide to Sergio Roberto. We think Sergio Roberto's got a shooting opportunity. Unselfish play, clever play from Sergio Roberto. And an emphatic finish from Luis Suarez. Oh, unlucky for Navas, but right under his glove. That's the pace of the finish, isn't it, that the beats the Madrid goalkeeper from pretty close range. Crisp finish from Luis Suarez. It's been crisp play from Barcelona. Start the second half. Suarez is flying now. A smiling assassin. So long, did it now into double figures, and he's really motoring again now. For ten goals for the season. He went through a very long spell without scoring. Zidane is going to have to take action. Going to have to introduce some creative minds. Give Bale or Isco or Asensio a chance to express themselves. No longer can they sit back. Marcelo. Tashtegan leaves it. Important header from Alba. Suarez and Casemiro. And he leaves the studs in there as well. That is the complete Suarez package, isn't yeah, it? Uh, they've both been aggressive. Suarez has given as good as he gets, as he always does. I'm not so sure there's a need for Suarez to roll around in, in agony. Shoulder to shoulder, Suarez wins that tussle. Casemiro doesn't do anything wrong there. It's a little bit of afters. I think he tries, doesn't he, Casemiro? It's self-preservation in the heat at the moment. Swings his leg round. Not so sure he catches Suarez though. That's fine things up a little bit. Yep, the festive greetings have started in the second half. That's for sure. Marcelo, nice take from Benzema, but a blind pass. Easy for Busquets to cut out. Rakitic, Moran, Ramos, stay at home defenders, Ramos has left his post, Busquets with a fine tackle, Paulinho, now Lionel Messi, Suarez alongside him, Suarez, oh, cheekily, or did he cheekily, try to go for the near post, I think it was actually the turf which uh, decided where he was going to go, it was a slip. Yep. See that clearly with a divot that's left after Suarez. The game is opening up. Real Madrid are going to have to be careful. Iran plays Suarez on side. Initially, Suarez is looking to square it again, but sees the gap at the near post, but just slipped. So he's finishing attempt off. So, Kovacic to Modric. Affected the harmony of Real Madrid. It was keeping them guessing. It's not that trio, though, is it? Was it? <laughs> well, it's a world class trio yeah. that he has on the bench. Let's go, Bell. Let's give you half a chance to get back in the game. If you're a really brave man, would you throw on all three? A complete change in the system, wouldn't it? to Carvajal. Stopped by his fellow Spain international fullback, Jordi Alba. Modric. And Suarez is down again. Ramos is best advised to get out of there. Yeah. 
traditional booking in the Classico for Sergio Ramos. Looking to take the ball. That was, across, that was a slap slate. across the face, wasn't it? He just can't help himself sometimes. Two or three challenges in the first half as well. I think that's as much of a touching up procedure as well. Well, he has uh, quite a rap sheet in the Classicos. Sergio Ramos, five red cards against Barcelona. Well, he has to keep his head pure and simple. We've seen we're up against it at the moment. Trying to get himself back in the title race. One goal down at home. It's quite obvious there, isn't it? How we got slow motion and the perfect angle on the replay. It's an old-fashioned clip of the year, wasn't it? And again, I'm not so sure Suarez is, is particularly badly injured, but coming off the game, slowing the game down, getting an opponent in trouble. And we can see the top knot. Will it be top notch? It is all three. Is it all three? Or just the two so far. Something more than just the one substitute from Madrid. in the free kick. Take a big punch as well, or on the outside of his ankle and it sort of gets him with the other leg. Look at the space there, I talked earlier about the trust in leaving Kovacic in the holding midfield position. Casemiro shouldn't leave that role at all. That should be purely, totally his responsibility. Share that responsibility and a player doesn't concentrate, such as Kovacic there, it's far too easy for Rakitic to make ground, get into the final third of the pitch. Looks comfortable for Barcelona that goal from a Madrid perspective. Palinho. What a significance is if Barcelona win today. Real Madrid will be behind them in the standings by 14 points. Atletico is second, of course, but they blew it on that Friday night. And Suarez has gifted a chance here. Messi's inside. It's a dreadful clearance to Paulinho. And they're offering no protection at the moment at all to Kelly Navas. I believe it was Kovacic as well chasing back with a back heel. The planet hasn't played much, and it appears to be the pace tough to deal with in a classic goal in one of his few games. Return from injury. Well, he's, he's down, I think. He's going to be taken out of the firing line at the next opportunity by Zinedine Zidane. PK strides adventurously out of defence and continues the run. Messi picks out Suarez. Suarez, chance to kill the game! Oh, Navas again keeps it alive. Danger hasn't got away. It's Lionel Messi to Suarez! Barcelona hit the post again. Paulinho! It's circus football, but the referee is spoiling the fun. Red card. Carvajal dismissed. Well, this is going to significantly change the plans of Zinedine Zidane. Looking to bring the subs on us, and if you see a handball in here, no complaints from Carvajal. I'm sure that Barcelona didn't finish this, this attack off quicker and sooner. Suarez with the first attempt, Messi tried to set Suarez up again. No handball in, it's a really good save from Carvajal, isn't it? No wonder there's no complaints, he leaps up. Well, it's, it's needs must, but I just wonder whether the referee needed to give the penalty. If he just held his whistle for a second, the goal would have been given. All adds to the drama. Real Madrid down the man again in a Clasico. Lionel Messi on the spot. The eyes of the world of Lionel Messi! Who doesn't fail, Messi does it again! The record scorer in all of the Clásicos puts Barcelona some distance ahead of the pack in La Liga. We missed one last week against Deportivo La Coruña, and this week 
Certainly didn't look nervous, did he? Didn't mess about, puts his foot through the ball in towards the top corner. Real Madrid down to ten men. We know this, but we know they won't give up. But this is a, an uphill task now for Zidane's team. Is he going to still make the, the necessary changes? Should he have done it quicker? 11 against 11, there was still with a chance, but he delayed the substitutions. Carvajal with the handball. Messi with a penalty. Puts Barcelona firmly in control. Not only today, but perhaps the rest of the season. Well, he loves the pose, doesn't he, Lionel Messi? And he is going to be the headline maker tomorrow. Well, surely Zidane has to gamble. He's going to bring on Nacho. An extra defender to make up for the loss of the defender of Carvajal. But he has to consider his gamble here. He's got nothing to lose, Terry, has he? You, you look at the, the players that he's got out there, he's taken off Benzema, I think, and Nacho coming on, which sends out a signal that supporters don't agree with. You could put Casemiro back into the back four if you wanted to just shore things up at the back. Well, it's very rare that the, the Real Madrid supporters question the wisdom of Zinedine Zidane. Eight majors as a manager. They hold five titles at the moment. But uh, Quizzical looks around the Bernabeu and he takes off a centre forward and brings on a defender with his team. Two goals down and a man down. You could go to a back three, couldn't you? You could do something to try and shape it up, to try and give your team the chance. Gareth Bell still in his kit, prepared, ready for action. Here is Kovacic to Cristiano Ronaldo. Kovacic again as PK sticks out a boot. The fans claiming it was a hand. Now Paulinho. We don't like Real Madrid off just yet. We haven't seen the spirit on that many occasions this season. It is recent, last season. So important in there. Title victory. Coming back from goals behind, late goals, late winners. Never giving up. Three quarters of the game gone, and he is going for it. Zidane. He's going to utilize all of his allocation of substitutes. Bale and Asensio will enter the ring. I think it's with Bale. I mean, he started off his career as a as a fullback. He can almost play in that hybrid position. We talked about round three, what Barcelona have to do now is what they've done right at the start of the second half. Possession-based game, more patient. And the fact that Real Madrid was slow to get out, close them down, encouraged Barcelona that it was the right method. It's paid off with two goals. Against ten men, it should be slightly easier. Of course, with a two-goal advantage, they don't have to go chasing any more goals. The attacks will open up, make the pitch as big as they possibly can. Certainly going to be up against a little bit more speed now, aren't they? With Gareth Bale and Asensio coming on. Well, they beat Barcelona with 10 men earlier in the season, didn't they? The Spanish Super Cup when Ronaldo was dismissed. Three quarters of the game gone. Suarez and Messi, familiar names on the Classico score sheet. Utilising the extra little bit of space afforded by Carver Howell's dismissal. Just going to say, classic PK, isn't it? Two goals up for home against Real Madrid. Could resist the temptation there to, to run forward with the ball. Rakitic was the player, and Busquets that have filled in quickly. Draw the album. Get on your feet, says the referee. You see, uh, collides with Nacho. Marcelo's caught in possession. Messi. Paulinho. And lucky that Caelan Navas is on top four. Yep, yeah, it was a heavy last touch, wasn't it, from Paulinho? Just got away from the 
came in, gave the goalkeeper a chance of getting there first. Kovacic gives it away in midfield again to Andres in the end. So it'll be interesting at the end of the game to roll back that second goal and see where it actually stemmed from. There's Lionel Messi, Kovacic half stops him. Messi is fully stopped by Kayla Navas. They smell blood pass. Yeah, I cannot understand how long it's taken Real Madrid to make these changes. Kovacic has, has been struggling for about 10 minutes in the midfield position. Suffering with fatigue, not being able to get around the pitch, they're down to 10 men. if they lost today, but it is going to be a massive gap if they can't pull it back. 11 points at kickoff, 14 points if it remains like this, the distance between these two clubs. Valencia and Atletico sandwiched between them. Simply does, and they're not allowing the Real Madrid to make those changes. Oh, no, but <laughs> keeping possession for about 10 minutes now. Marcelo, who breaks the ranks. Marcelo to Cristiano Ronaldo. How they need the World Player of the Year to do something special. Fires it in. Iniesta digs in. Modric. Barcelona captain takes on responsibility. Jordi Alba. Fine football from the back from Barcelona. Now Paulinho, the link man. Suarez. Time for change. This is how they came alive. We've done that really well in the second half. We've seen more of Lionel Messi because his team have had more possession. supporters are concerned. Sensio and Bailon and Samiro and Kovacic replaced in midfield. Modric. Him or Bell, as we've seen Messi get a second goal there from the penalty spot. Well, this guy's played more games than anybody else for Real Madrid this season. His form over the last year has been outstanding. But this guy remains a spectator as they've made all of the changes. Sergio Roberto. Paulinho tries to free himself at the far post. Modric to Marcelo. Come on, Rich. Gareth Bale works his way inside. Marcelo Asensio. Comes off the rear of Sergio Roberto. Little Messi. Roberto. Only Suarez ahead of him, so he has to go sideways. And 
pace remains the pace of the game. I think any would see the full 90 minutes out, won't he? And it's important, Robbie, in terms of what Barcelona are trying to do, trying to defend the two-goal lead against 10 men, keep things ticking over. He uses his experience and his quality to make sure his teammates continue to do exactly what they've done throughout this second half. Bringing on Denis Suarez to replace him. We know that Denis Suarez is going to be enthusiastic. He's going to get on the ball. He's going to dribble with the ball and maybe at times give the ball away. Final quarter of an hour here at the Bernabeu. Busy weekend of football here on Sky Sports. Don't forget, later this evening, it's Leicester City against Manchester United. Build-up starts at 7 o'clock on the Sky Sports Premier League channel. Gross to Marcelo. Gross gets. Marcelo playing a dangerous game back there. He's doing everything he can, isn't he, to, to keep his arms out of the way. He's got them behind his back, turns his back on the cross. Well, since, you know, it clearly wasn't on the hand. Elbow, yes. Speed from Varane, but there's a nudge in the back from Messi. In the opinion of the referee's assistant. of touches, isn't it, on Varane after he played the ball. Just as he's playing the ball from this, he just touches him on the back. Time to change for Barcelona as well. They're going to bring on Semena, and they, maybe not unsurprisingly, it's Andres Iniesta who is replaced. As he has been in all but one game that he started this season. Homage from the travelling Barcelona supporters. And they take off a midfield man, bring on a, a fullback in Semedo. One would uh, imagine that Sergio Roberto will take on a position, if not the role, of Iniesta in midfield as part of the reject. Successive games in La Liga at the Bernabeu. And this is a dramatic turnaround from Zidane's team. Ramos. I still have the opinion well that there's still something left in this game for Real Madrid that we've seen it too often in the past, particularly under Zidane. This place had it from the substitute Semero. Asensio's in. Oh, some tackle. The Marlon earns his stripes. He's been super today, isn't he? High fives all around, but they're going to switch on again. Marcelo. Ronaldo. As the clock ticks down, Real Madrid are beginning to come alive here. Here is the resistance. It's Modric. Gareth Bale! Oh, Bale was almost back in a blaze of glory. That would have been some introduction. Benzema. Lionel Messi has space. Fine stop from Nacho. Now it's taken on Classico proportions. Yeah, this is more like the traditional Real Madrid, isn't it? More attacking players, more pace in the team. Just gross and Modric, no holding midfielder. And in the centre of the midfield area now for Real Madrid. So no pushing on. Bale. Marcelo. For once, PK doesn't make it. Ronaldo's in a heap on the floor. Suarez, great tackle by Modric. For now. to get it onto that left foot and put in a sweeping shot, which he does. Oh, to Stegen. A bit of loose goalkeeping there. The German 
is winning the battle with a Welshman. Clearly still work for Simon to do to make sure they get all three points. So I didn't really believe that the attempt from Gareth Bowden just that they might spill it. Tommy reacted. It was easy for the goalkeeper to get the spillage. Roberto to Semedo, he continues the run. Semedo! Oh, flashes it across the face of goal. Deflected off the keeper, I think it was. Again, it's another good save from Michaelo Navas. This is going to be uh, the two players playing on the right side of the pitch, getting involved, bringing Messi into, Messi into the play. Run off the ball, Modric here, running towards the box. Gareth Bale on his right foot, just slightly behind him, but he should do better, should get more power on the, the finish. So Bale, a long range attempt, and clearly, it's fine this moment there, Ter Stegen, which has been a really good season for him, but... Hung in the air, Ronaldo clears. Alba, Busquets. Sergio Roberto. The final ten minutes. Tidane is never the most expressive of coaches, but he's down there barking at his players, trying to bring them to life. So, that's where the extra space is, picked up by Alba, Messi. Modric, Gareth Bell. Steps on the gas, stopped by Busquets once. Luka Modric. Sergio Ramos. Asensio. Ramos has gone into the centre forwards position. Asensio's cross. Corner. Ramos will stay out there. Peran will join him. They've got to throw in all of the heavyweights. Taken quickly by Marcelo. Great ball in. Space for cross. Referee says no penalty. Ramos follows up to Stegen with a very brave and brilliant block. Now he completes. That's really good play from. Sergio Ramos, a really sharp play. Turn and get his shot away, quick to react. Manager trying to build some, some pressure. Marcelo's oh, got to be careful, got booked. Hands all over the referee. They're too strong in his protest, the Brazilian. He's going to keep his head. Kroos aims for the near post, flashes across. PK with an important header. Asensio to Modric, Ronaldo, oh, a foot step away from Sergio Ramos. He may have been offside, but he wasn't to know that as he did the splits. But they haven't given up, have they? They're still with one man down. They've had two or three chances since Danny Carvajal was sent off. Modric feeds Ronaldo, Ramos is offside. Ronaldo slides it across goal, it is just out of reach. See Tony Kroos for the appeal again against Rakitic. His hands up in an unusual position. One's across his chest, one is firmly down by his side. It's, it's another penalty for me. Stegen makes the save with his face there. From Sergio Ramos at the near post. Comes off his shoulder. And Barcelona make the change. Paulinho. Given the high fives for the whole of the bench. But, uh, Gomez is his replacement. Andre Gomez will have the instruction to keep things tight and organised for the remaining six and a half minutes. Modric, stolen by Messi. Gomez immediately in 
involved. Messi. Finding the freedom. Gomez joins in. Took a, a very important deflection. Committed block from Varane. He's such a good player, isn't he, Sergio Roberto? Seen him playing in the right back role. And he steps into midfield and you forget what a good midfield player he is as well. So capable of replacement for Iniesta in this at this stage of the game. So a really good touch. Fantastic centre forward there. Touch round the corner. Powerful attempt at goal, denied by Ter Stegen. Busquets. Rakitic breezes past Marcelo. Stopped by Bale. Well, the good news for Real Madrid is that Gareth Bale is looking fit and fresh again after his year of injury problems. Uses. They're two down. There's less than five minutes remaining. And the replayer down with Carver Howe walking the plank for his deliberate handball. Messi wins it back. Touch Stegen has had to play his part as well. The bring of his 11th clean sheet of the season in La Liga. Signs are he could be the German number one of the World Cup this summer. His form has been so good. Suarez. Barca content to play down the clock. Rodri can't score if Barcelona have possession of the football. Roberto. Jordi Alba. To Messi. Head down that incredible close control. Checked by Varel. At the end of that, he was trying to chip it towards the far post, wasn't he, for his teammate, strike partner. Luis Suarez. He said he's never beaten the Sinedine Zidane team. I joke that he'd not been in charge of Barcelona on too many occasions during that run. Tactically, Barcelona have been more masterly today. He came with the plan, Valverde. And his players have carried it off to the letter. Rakitic. Ronaldo wins it. Lionel Messi's volley. Oh, uncomfortable save from Navas. He makes it look easy. We shouldn't, shouldn't ignore that. The technique there with players closing him down. Ball coming down out of the sky. Able to hit the target. Was Kelly and Navas into another save. Well, last season, the title effectively came down to who won the Clasico. Well, finished three points ahead of Barcelona. This is going to be so damaging. It could be the end of Real Madrid's title chances. Barca some distance ahead of the rest. And uh, Busquets. Despite his apology, he's booked. He's going to have an extra long break in the new year. Always the home game with Levante. Two minutes remaining. Real Madrid seeking inspiration. It long, a double flick, and Ramos can't react. Once more, there is an offside in there. He's a beaten man, he's in the lead today. Well, we've got to look at how the first half of the season has gone back in August when Real Madrid thrashed Barcelona 5 1. Just didn't see this happening, did we? We see the attempt from Messi. He came out and said in his first time in his club, which had been nine years, the first time he felt inferior to Real Madrid. 
what do you assume then? If there was going to be a points deficit this much, it was going to be in favour of Zidane's team. So certainly Barcelona have used that setback pre-season as third motivation. Real Madrid costly defeats against Betis here and Girona away. Ronaldo. Spanish and European champions. World club champions. European Super Cup champions, the Spanish Super Cup champions have been humbled in front of their own supporters. Modric. Okay. Okay. He can be proud of his performance today. Not too many in the Real Madrid. 11, 10 as they are now. Will be too content with what they put in. But that's at nine because Marcelo's off the pitch, feeling the pain. The first half was pretty even, wasn't it, in terms of percentage of possession, attempts on goal. I thought Real Madrid probably just shaded it. Suarez to Messi. We enter the additional three minutes. Messi, Gomez, oh, big chance, Andre Gomez. Just that conviction on the finish there, didn't need to, to really wrap things up for Barcelona. So taking off care on the footed attempt, so puts it over the crossbar. Sergio Roberto's view, I presume, as he picks out Luis Suarez. The goal of the game, always so important. Any top level game of football, when the stakes are high and you're really close, that first goal, just so important to Barcelona. But they're playing the second half, they've, they've clearly deserved to get the, the three points. He came to Vidal. Messi on the score sheet once more, leading the attack is PK. Now Vidal. The draws are caught up and they are making life so difficult for Real Madrid. Many of the supporters have vacated the stadium. Starting Christmas early. Job well done for Sergio Roberto. Assisted in the goal. Played a couple of positions. Drinking water, but they may be cracking. Cracking over the carver later on. Y, y ha demostrado, pues bueno. Hoy ha Messi. encontrado los espacios. En... Sí. Sergi Busquets. Lionel Messi. Gets past Marcelo, Messi plays it back, and oh, will he squeeze it? Game one, set and match, 3-0 Barcelona, they are humiliating Real Madrid. Alex Vidal joins the party. Another great piece of play from Lionel Messi. Good finish from Vidal as well. Hasn't been on the pitch long. Wraps it up totally now for Barcelona. Real Madrid despondent, as you'd expect, three goals behind, down to ten men. Barcelona thoroughly enjoying themselves yet again at the Bernabeu. And the supporters can now celebrate. Is this out of play when Messi gets it? Looks very close to being out of play. The play was allowed to continue. Real Madrid switch off. Marcelo loses track of Lionel Messi. Skips around Marcelo, too easy. Cut back towards the edge of the box. Players queuing up, Vidal would have the attempt. Just for a second there, you thought he wasn't going to cross the line. Kayla Namas gets more than enough to it, but it just creeps over the goal line for Barcelona. Well, Alex Vidal enjoying the introduction. A rare mistake from Kayla Navas, but in truth, all the damage had been done well before that. Squirms through, the sun beating down on the burnabout. These are dark days for Real Madrid. 
and it's Happy New Year for Valverde and Barcelona. They have had a Saturday afternoon stroll at the Bernabeu. It's a historical moment as well, the first time they've ever won three games in a row away from home against Real Madrid, and the gap between the two teams now is a massive 14 points. Wow, and that is a long way back.